It takes about 130 hours to build one Bentley Bentayga, the new Bentley SUV, and that's approximately factor 10 of what you usually use to build one single car. There's a lot of handcraft here inside, of course, but the platform from the Audi Q7. And so we also know already quite a lot about this car. For the first time, Bentley has built an SUV that will be a major change for the brand. And But I think a lot of people will definitely buy it because they also seek more comfort in this upright seating position for about 200,000 euros as the entry price. We see the basic ba uh, Bentley front grille with a very huge stance on road. And this one you know, appears even more impressive when it's sitting a little bit higher. Impressive on the one hand, maybe a little exaggerated on the other hand. That is definitely up to you. The classic Bentley round lights that symbolize more of a traditional way of designing automobiles. As we are in a kind of small cave here, it's really hard to see the side profile, but we can show you as much as possible. I'm just totally in love with this color. This is one of my most favorite colors I've ever seen. This blue has very shimmering different nuances in it and it's really totally astonished about this color. I'm not really like the biggest fan of the car layout, but this color is just really cool. And the wheels are almost bigger than myself. Look at that one, 22 inch. And well, they've sprayed it, that looks at, that's always, why don't do they do that? that you know, it's more shiny, sprayed it, some stuff on there. Huge brakes, of course, but you know, there has already been a little bit of criticism that the brakes would be too small. Hmm, maybe you should go for ceramic then. Then what's also very nice, the air outtake here. Is there something behind it? No, it seems there's nothing. It's just, just styling. But it also forms a Bentley B. That's a very nice idea. I like that when you have such ideas here. See, the B form. Very nice. Here, down there, <laughs> the B form of the air outtake. B. Very nice. And also a British flag below there. <laughs> also another nice idea. Yeah, the side profile. There's one dropping line above the door handles. You see the door handles have also kind of two color shape. The colors on the outside and on the upside we got the chrome style element. Also very, very well done. Then the side profile shape is rather classical. You see it drops here to form a little bit of the shoulders and we get remind a little bit on the Q7. Um, the Q7 more has kind of a station wagon layout and that's also a little bit is accounting here for this vehicle definitely. The rear is blocked at the moment so we can take our chance to take a first look at the co-driver seat here. <laughs> so inside of the doors of course a lot of wood and jean leather is used. I'm not sure if you ask them if you don't want Genio Lennon, if they can change it. Rolls-Royce does it. I'm not sure about Bentley. Then, huge entry covers here. And this is your world of luxury then. And it's the traditional Bentley layout as for the middle console and on the seats. If you know, for example, the GT, uh, GTC, or also um, uh, the, the Mulsanne. Well, the Mulsanne is quite of different. This is more the... Um, a little bit more modern layout of the Flying Spur or the GTC and um, of course I prefer that because the Mosin is a little bit too old school for me as for the styling. So let's get inside and what is nice that the, um, the color of the dashboard is not entirely black, it's also held in a rather dark blue tone that is also fitting to the exterior. Also here, also the, the, the plastic elements are held in this dark blue tone. And what we for example see about Bentley, why are you buying Bentley, that even this here has a good sound and a good jacket, jacket structure and it's real metal and not some plastic remakes and that's one of the reasons you would pay 200,000 euros, I mean in the entry version. With all extras, 300 is well, not unrealistic, definitely. As in your Q7 you get a very high upright seating position and that's also the main difference. The visibility to the front is indeed limited, the hood is really huge because below that We'll also soon take a look at that. Is of course also a huge engine. Soon give you more details about the engine then. Like the central layout that we have, you know, not so much playing around, just very few lines that define the middle console then. We change seats and 
this car does not have three seats in behind. We have a split here that you can, for example, enjoy the rear seat entertainment. See the middle one for the beverage holders. And so maybe this will even be used more often as a chauffeur car than one of the classic sedans if people get to know that sitting in the rear here is way more comfortable than in the classic sedan. Because in those, like in, like in the Molson classic sedan or also in the flying spur, you fall down, you know, fall, fall back. It's like a sleeping position. Here you can very well adjust it as well and have also the seat very upright. And this gives you, gives you also a very good view to the countryside. And you can even put it higher when you're a little bit smaller or put it lower. So also electronic controls for the rear seats here, very nice. This is the, let's see, how's the, what's the maximum position? Whoa, even goes further, very interesting. And of course, you got a very relaxing seating position here, definitely. Um, you can use it as a chauffeur car when the front seat is, for example, and now um, put more on the front, that would be very well possible then. And you can flip out another table here to put something more on right here. And a great panoramic roof, especially from the rear compartment, you can very well look outside then from here. So, let's get to the rear of the car. There it is, the trunk, and this really looks like Q7, especially if you see the different rails for, for, the, for the system. And um, this seems to be a um, custom inbuilt then. There's, of course, an electric hatch possible. This opens with that one. And this seems to be um, a system. I'm not sure what, what, what's, what it's really doing here. Maybe um, we can have that one explained. Can you, um, can you show it how it works? So let's see what it really is. Some kind of se separator for the trunk then. Ah. Ah, okay, it's, it's a sit down. Huh? It's an event seat. An event seat. Ah, ah wow. <laughs> okay, that's really decadent. So you can enjoy your picnic right here, of course, with a, uh, a calling champagne. Is it also cooled? Yeah. And yeah, of course, it's cooled. How could it be also? And, you know, if you have opened the bottle, you close it with the Bentley bottle closer, of course. So a lot you can do with that one and just sit down here. Um, reminds me a little bit. Is it also proof for sitting down? Yeah. Don't want to break the Ventiger here. And it reminds me a little bit of a Range Rover, for example, where this feature is also quite often used where you flip out the, reg the, the hatch. And, um, here it um, flips a little bit down, so in the Range Rover it feels more stable when sitting on there. Um, mm. But maybe you just take the blanket and, and um, sit down on, on, the, on the ground probably the most luxurious way to take your picnic around with the car. Very interesting. So uh, can we close the hatch also again? So we can have a look at the hatch then. So you have upside it down, but you see you have a lot of space in the trunk when you don't have this pickup layout then. Electronic hatch. And there it comes. Big Bentley logo as well. And more also of a classic layout with a round style of the taillights, but you know, definitely more modern than, for example, we've seen in the sedans, definitely. So this is also another new step forward in the Bentley design, definitely. Let's check out the front cockpit. Around here. So far it's blocked, but maybe we can take a look at the engine then. Let's see. There it is. Then we give them a little bit more, more time. About the engines, there will be the W12 available at first and about 600 horsepower. Let's see where it is. There we can open it. There it is, 6 liter W12 twin turbo. It's also a nice engine cover layout. Um, However, this will be the entry en engine so far, but later on they also thought about, okay, what can we do to reduce consumption just a little bit, because it's obviously a very heavy car, two and a half tons. Later on there will also be a um, V8 diesel available, for example, and there's also a plug-in hybrid announced, and I'm not sure if it will have any reasonable uh, electric fuel range, 
but of course it's better just to, to use the, the W12 because this one, this concept here with such a huge SUV and such a big engine is surely a concept of yesterday, even though I still love the color. This is also a nice detail. The, you see the insulation from the hood from the inside has a comp structure like we have seen on the seats, for example. I love those details when you know put them in and that, that shouldn't cost anything more, you know. So I will close to it. I'm you know I'm a very um, tidy person, so I will close to hood points. That's it, so I didn't have to hammer it down. Yeah, the only thing is missing is then the cockpit perspective and we just wait a few more seconds because we want, don't want to disturb that much and then we also show you the cockpit perspective. And now let's get inside in the front. By the way, of course, we have a soft closing door here. There it is. So the steering wheel and this is the latest stage where you see that this is basically an Audi Q7. Of course, Bentley engineers do not want to hear that because, yes, the car is, of course, way more refined than the Q7 in the you know, final work. But just, for example, look at the steering wheel buttons and the steering wheel itself, which is rather untypical Bentley style. And, but I like it because it seems rather compact. And I'll take a seat right here now. We'll soon also show you the infotainment system more in detail. But definitely... The steering wheel makes a sportier impression than the ones we had before. Of course, this was obviously carried over from the Q7, also or all the levers here. But it's a good thing because the Q7 is really one of one of the best SUVs. Although I don't like it from a, from a, our exterior design, it's really good in the refinement. And we see it here, for example, also at the steering controls on the steering wheel. The instruments are still in the analog way, left and right. Obviously, taking the full ins digital instrument was a little step too far, but in the middle one, you see it has risen way much. Bentley safeguard? I don't know. <laughs> That's maybe from a demo mode here right now. In the screen, we can also do more now. This is a new, completely new infotainment screen, and I think we'll change camera perspective for that one. So what you can see is also that Audi-inspired we got the new turning knobs and it has exactly the Audi sound laboratory sound. And again, I really say this is a good thing to do. Still a lot of buttons we see here, but of course it's because you can control so much. For example, also the seat cooling or the seat heating. The new infotainment screen, you see this is the rear view camera and you also have this kind of fake drone view from above. Um, but as the doors are opened everywhere all around, it doesn't work here in this case. You can also uh, switch the cameras then around, for example, to the front or the rear. Let's see, uh, you, it's hard to see it right, right now in, the, in this strange light. And this is a fake roof from above um, if you have the horizontal layout and if all doors would be closed now. The new infotainment screen works like an app source. You can see it right here. And you can also scroll with it. And it was utterly near that they update the system. And it's also a different system than, for example, we see in the Audi. So this one here was developed especially for, for that vehicle here. The set nav, we can also show you that one as well. Off-road. Oh, we are off-road. Right. Okay. But I want to go to the... There it is. We know the visualization, basically, and... It doesn't. That one doesn't look like an Audi visual, it's more like the Volkswagen one we have in the VW, Skoda, and the Seat. But it's um, really good visualization. You can see it very well. And that's luckily man, Genfersee or the lake in Geneva. And the reaction times are also quite good. So this infotainment update was utterly needed here for the Bentley, and so you also get a modern system. Definitely, you can connect the phone right here. And one more seating test, as I had the seat here as the tall driver, this kind of knee space remains, so really a lot of knee space. Um, but of course, if you want to go in a more sleeping position with the rear seat, then you have to move it forward. I could go maximum like this now, and then I can go back and also relax. But um, I would really more enjoy the rather upright seating position here in the rear, definitely, if you went for the SUV stuff then. You can put your jacket right here, by the way, if you want to leave it. 
And infotainment-wise, on the rear, we can see kind of a resemblance to the one in the front. We have different apps we can choose from. The tablet, normal tablet, as you maybe also know from your tablet. And maybe if we have, an, well, there's no internet connection here, but we could go to YouTube and watch Auto Kufu, then that would be a great thing. Let's go to the desktop. Um, so it basically works like a normal tablet, and you can get your, uh, your movies here, for example. Bentley Entertainment Tablet, it says should be, I think, re same one than, than you get in the Audi, I guess. There's nothing on here now, but I think you get the basic, basic principle. Uh, it says that needs Wi-Fi here now for Google Earth. And you can also use some other controls, because hidden below here is the one we also know, for example, from the Flying Spur. I got that out right here, and there, were, there for example, you could... Um, see the analog clock that is in the front or you can also check out um, the, the, the temperature or also the speed of the driver so when you're sitting here and you can't see the, um, the, the the instruments in the front you can say oh driver you're driving 150 that's too fast for me please drive 140 or maybe 300 because um, I think the vehicle is also capable of doing that and also the massage function can be activated here so you also have a rear seat massage and this VAG, for example, you know, or there's also pulsation or uh, Eterimont, it's French menu right now. So different kinds of massage you can pick here even for the rear seats. And well, just by controlling, holding that device in hand, that's really a very nice luxury thing. Or for example, also changing the climatization here of the rear seats like this. It works everything quite fast and easy to control. If you like to play with electronic devices, that's surely the right thing for you. It slides down there and now it's fixed. So on a small conclusion, I'm not the biggest fan of the basic layout or the basic concept or idea of the vehicle. I'm the biggest fan of this color, definitely. And this SUV will offer more luxury than, for example, another luxury sedan. And therefore, I think it will also be one of the, maybe the crucial vehicle in the future for Bentley, definitely, as SUVs are still booming. And it has a reason, because this upright seating position is always an argument for itself. Together with the new infotainment system we have here, it's, of course, the most modern Bentley now. And therefore, it's also a big differentiation towards the other vehicles. And that it sits basically on the Audi Q7 is also not an argument against it, but for the vehicle, because you then know what to expect and can all use the very good parts we have here from the Volkswagen Corporation. Later on this year, we'll also drive this vehicle, and we can also tell you more about the driving performance with this huge engine, and of course, how is it still agile, although it has so much weight still. And in future, I will also be looking forward, what about the plug-in hybrid? How will this one here perform? And... Of course, what would be great if there would be, you know, other different seat surfaces available here as, for example, Rolls-Royce offering on the um, bespoke level. But maybe if you just ask your Bentley dealer, you can also get something else besides the old, you know, old-style luxury leather combination you have here. Thank you very much for tuning in for this preview and I hope you liked it. And also tell me your comments about the Bentley Bentayga in the exterior interior and also the other features we've shown you. Thank you very much.